not under repair. The George Joe Star novel is one of the most interesting pieces of JoJo media to exist. Although it isn't considered canon to the main story, George Joe Star still provides many interesting elements that expands upon the JoJo mythos. One of the most interesting aspects of George Joe Star is the stands it contains. Just like the original series, each stand has their own unique abilities that help to guide or block a hero's path. Hell, not everything that appears in George Joe Star can even be considered a stand. So I wanted to take a look at every stand in George Joe Star, excluding the repeated ones from the original series, and explain almost every aspect of their abilities and what makes them so unique. Yubo is a long distance colony type stand that possesses the capabilities of a submarine. Each submarine can fire rounds of torpedoes and missiles, which explode on contact. These missiles seem to defy physics, as they can travel through space to Earth's atmosphere without burning up. Just like Diver Down, Yubo can dive into the bodies of living organisms and can then freely travel through the bodily fluids, skin, and bones. The stand can even travel through its user's body, which allows it to protect them from projectile attacks. If the bodily fluids of a host touches another person, Yubo is then able to travel into their bodies instead, and the most dangerous aspect of this diving ability is that the stand can still fire its missiles within the host's body, which can be lethal depending on how it's used. Fusing the submarines together can cause U-Boat to grow in size until eventually it becomes the size of a real submarine. U-Boat has a host of other abilities and features like a periscope that allows for scoping on an area, viewing live images, or locking onto targets. U-Boat can also ping a host's body inside with sonar, and a radio which allows for communication with other U-Boats. NYPD Blue is a close range sentient stand that takes on the appearance of a middle aged man. It has complete dominion over any records and data that exists between law enforcement agencies like the FBI, CIA, Interpol, and the Canadian Mountain Police. Just like Paisley Park, NYPD can access and sort through every file and piece of data that they possess with ease. It uses them to gain access to certain pieces of information. Other technological abilities it possesses is the ability to record anything through its eyes and live stream or send that information to police organizations around the world. Hell, the stand can even perform accurate autopsies, although it doesn't like doing this. In terms of offensive abilities, the stand has the physical capabilities of your average middle-aged man, which is no joke, but that's still on the weaker side. However, it makes up for this with the possession of a gun. It pretty much has all the abilities and destructive power of a real gun, so enemy stand users don't want to be caught lacking when it's pulled out. The passion looks and functions almost identical to Hermit Purple, such as his power to produce psychic photographs of people's positions and hidden locations where a camera is struck. Iron Ladies pretty much functions the exact same way as Sex Pistols. It consists of a group of sentient stands that help in the redirection of bullets. But unlike Sex Pistols, these stands cross-dress and use volleyball maneuvers to redirect bullets to a precise degree instead of the soccer maneuvers or their cannon counterparts. Singing in the rain takes the form of a giant frog with abnormally long limbs, muscular build, has stars for eyes, and will walk in a bipedal or quadrupedal manner. The stand seems to have the ability to stick to surfaces, such as when it did it with the barrier surrounding Morio. It can do this even with Funny Valentine on its back. I don't remember if it ever used it, but the stand could probably utilize its long tongue to grab objects, and with its size, it could easily swallow a small animal or person whole. Grand Blue are a set of three dolphins with razor sharp teeth and tiny wings. The dolphins can fly at extremely high speeds and can reach far off locations in mere minutes. All the downsides of riding fast moving objects like wind resistance, g force, and inertia are negated, so a rider of Grand Blue will barely feel their effects. The stand is also long range, so they can be sent to other locations without the stand user present. Just like Moody Blues, Videodrome can recreate crime scenes in accurate detail. First, a user must reach their hand inside a corpse and take out a cassette tape. The tape contains a variety of buttons. When pressed, causes the tape to unravel and take the form of a dead individual. The tape will then reenact the events leading up to their death. Once the point of death occurs, the tape will fold back up and the words the end will be projected. The enactments can be paused, fast forwarded, and rewinded. Stray Dog is one of the weirdest looking stands I've ever seen. It consists of three segments connected by four insect like legs. Just like the name indicates, Stray Dog can control stray dogs in a huge town sized radius, and then it can make them perform a variety of tasks. Variety of tasks? Learn how to pronounce words, you stupid motherfucker. And then it can make them perform a variety of jobs. This ability is incredibly useful for gathering objects around town. It could be a dangerous offensive tool against enemy stand users. 
Face Off is a robotic close range stand and its ability swapping the faces and fingerprints of anyone it operates on, which effectively turns them into another person. The stand's ability is functionally similar to Cinderella from Diamonds Unbreakable. Rear Window is a small humanoid stand that can open a window on any surface that resembles a frame, such as an open mouth or the gaps on a ladder. The stand can then appear within the windows and can freely travel through them. The stand possesses a gun which can peek through the windows, in which it can be used for the art of assassination. Right Stuff are a colony type stand that are pretty much like Oompa Loompas or Minions. They are composed of a bunch of humanoid stands that set out to complete any jobs given to them by their user. They have a high degree of intelligence and coordination, being able to build and take apart tiny spaceships while analyzing all of its internal problems and being knowledgeable on how to locate and disarm explosives. Stepmom looks like sticky fingers but possesses a separate ability. Instead of zippers, Stepmom can sew anything together after plunging the sewing needle into an object. It used this to sew Jono's mouth closed and can likely sew wounds and other physical objects together. In a way, this stand doesn't function all that differently from the OG Sticky Fingers. Blue Thunder allows a user to summon propellers on any part of their body, like the head, hands, and feet. The size in them can be manipulated to the degree that they can even grow larger than a building. Summoning these propellers on the head allows one to fly for extended periods of time, and they can even be used as an effective weapon. Blob has a similar appearance to Green Day, but instead of disintegrating organic matter based on altitude, it can instead create tornadoes capable of sucking up everything in their path. It's strong enough to capture several people at once. Bit of a downgrade if you ask me. Evil Dead takes the form of a large disembodied head, with hands for eyes and blood dripping from its mouth and eyes. It can turn things invisible, but only from a certain direction. Those on one side of the building could see it, but those on the opposite side wouldn't. Twister looks like Grateful Dead, but with a whole mummy-like aesthetic. I don't recall ever using its stand ability. According to the author George Joestar, there's a stand named Scarface belonging to Fugo, and it apparently has the ability to spread mass delusions over a large crowd of people. Dopio has the ability to turn any random object into a phone, regardless of size, and literally anything you can think of can become a phone. These can send and receive calls with anyone with other phones, and the reception is so good that it can transcend time and space. Any object turned into a phone will remain as one as long as they aren't broken. Dopio has the option of turning a foe's body into a phone, which when wrong can cause a ton of internal damage. Dune allows for the precise control of sand. Just like Sandman, Dune can manipulate the sand in its environment and can then move them into different shapes. A user can even merge with the sand and wear it like a protective suit. Now we officially move on to ultimate variations of stands belonging to cars in Dio. Think of ultimate stands like Super Saiyan power-ups. Their abilities are the same, but 20 times more powerful. U-Boat Ultimate takes on a more futuristic appearance and can do everything the original U-Boat can, but likely to an even more powerful degree, such as with its sonar ability, which generated a noise so loud that anyone the sand was within would begin writhing in pain. The World Ultimate pretty much can do everything the original can, but instead of stopping time for 5 to 10 seconds, the limit is massively extended upwards of almost an hour. Ultimate D4C seemingly has the power to open portals on any surface. These portals allow cars and others to travel to other dimensions, and one can even hide within the portals. White Snake Ultimate can take out both stand and memory disks from an individual. But unlike its original counterpart, it can then duplicate these discs and give it to others, which will give them the duplicated ability, but it's limited to one stand per person. I mentioned this before, but imagine if cars gave a disc belonging to Wonderview, Echoes Act 2, and Bohemian Rhapsody to everyone on Earth, that would turn the entire planet into Gravity Falls. Made in Heaven Ultimate Requiem looks like the OG Made in Heaven, except that it possesses three heads instead of one. Made in Heaven Ultimate seems to accelerate time to an even more massive degree as they cycle through 37 different universes in a short span. That's not all. Made in Heaven Ultimate can also precisely accelerate time for living things, which was used to force another stand user to continuously create clones. Dune Ultimate isn't too different from the original, but it can pull in more sand than ever before and create even more durable structures. The next group of stands can't really be classified as stands, they are coined as wounds, and they manifest from a user's physical and psychological trauma. Wounds can form from a human or stand, and we see this on full display with Z-Moon Ultimate Requiem. 
The stand can likely make its user the center of reverse gravity like the original, but we've unfortunately haven't seen how this ability has improved. It's pretty much just there so the rider can segue to Maiden Heaven Ultimate Requiem. The wound belonging to Antonio Torres allows him to shed his skin like a snake. The skin he sheds encompasses his entire body. This is pretty basic on its own, but because Antonio is a zombie, any skin he sheds will come alive and become a functional clone. These clones can then shed their own skin to create even more clones. Because of the weird nature of his skin, he can use it to glide through the air like a wingsuit. Dream manipulation is a stand ability that allows its user to travel within and control people's dreams. So it's pretty similar to Death 13 from Stardust Crusaders. His user Javier Cortez uses the stand to torment his enemies while wearing a clown suit. Steven Morton Steven St Steven What? Steven Motor's wound gives him the ability to sprout angel like wings from his back, which gives him the ability to fly. However, these wings are made from flesh and bones, and are excruciating and are extremely painful every time he summons them. Pretty terrible drawback if you ask me. Penelope de la Rosa's wound can transform anything into a locked room. Everything you can think of like a window or door will lock themselves shut and those that don't possess locking mechanisms will be forced shut by chairs and other items. Almost anything can become a locked room, including dirt, which can surround someone and entrap them. A noose will drop from the ceiling of any locked room and will begin suffocating anyone trapped inside. The wound seems to possess massive range. Cube House consists of a number of square houses stacked upon each other. Cube House acts as a series of cubicle rooms. Each room contains a number of furniture and doors on all sides. Going through the doors will take you to another almost identical rooms. The rooms automatically reposition themselves depending on the position of its inhabitants. So no matter which door you go through, you'll always be walking on the floor and going through the door on the final cube will cycle you back to the first room. Cube House is only meant to hold on a person at a time, so any more than that will force Cube House to send both inhabitants to an alternate dimension where they'll never escape. Anyone who falls through Cube House will enter an infinite void in space, which distorts gravity and space time around them. Eventually, those affected will travel to another time or universe, depending on the wants or needs of those falling. The stand isn't simply the cube, but also takes the form of a girl. She is unable to exist a long distance away from the cube, but she can roll it around like a pair of dice. The Arrow Cross House is an evolved form of the cube house and belongs to the user Penelope de Rosa. The stand appears like a giant flat white building, akin to a museum. The most interesting design aspect of this building, however, is that it appears like an arrow pointing in four directions. And the interiors of the house is just as unique, with unique rooms within every arrow. There's two functions of the arrow cross house. One, a user can spin the house at blinding speeds, and everyone within the building is completely unaware of the spinning force from the rotation. This ability makes it so that it's virtually impossible to enter the arrow cross house without the permission of its user. Second, a user can place anyone within the house inside an alternate dimension that exists underneath the building. This dimension is cut off from reality, and there also exists no oxygen in this world as well. Those who are sealed here exist in a state of life and death, and they are not aware of anything that happens in the outside world. It also exists in a state of absolute zero, which means that nothing can ever occur here, as there exists no concept of ordinary reality. Remember when Jesus Christ appeared in Steel Ball Run? He wasn't just there as a weird illusion, but actually influenced the story, as they were responsible for the manifestation of Tuskak 3. However, as far as we know, this is the one and only time they appeared in Steel Ball Run. However, in George Joestar, this confusing plot device appears as another ability called a Beyond, which is separate from stands and wounds. This sort of acts like a god or author of a story that chooses a worthy person they think should be the hero of their story. One has the option of not accepting the Beyond's guidance, but doing so may lead to them suffering a brutal and painful end. Beyonds are intelligent and can communicate with others, but only someone with a Beyond can fight another Beyond user. One must truly believe in their Beyond in order for them to function, and once they activate, they'll guide their users in a subtle way, based on their roles in the story, in a way that may result in their victory. Beyonds aren't too reliable, any wavering of your faith may cause them to abandon you. Every stand in George Joestar would easily change the power balance of Jojo if they existed in the original universe. It's no wonder this story isn't canon.